be me. 5th edition homebrew, BDM for once. Have as party Le Rogue, Le Sorceress, Le Barbarian, Le Ranger. See distinct lack of tank and healer. See overwhelming squishiness in test sessions before plot and before characters have any strength. Decide to introduce DM player character that I can phase out as plot progresses and characters are less squishy, or one of them fucking dies and rerals. Decide to put a twist on an age old story. Party is following up on bounty to clear out local or camp. Rogue due to perception picked up on rumor as last sod that volunteered never came back. Damn shame. Figure it might be a rescue mission and obvious plot hook. And these players love a good story as much as I do. Party makes decent progress into stronghold and into blood pit sort of arena. Sitting in a cage is a younger man I described as Geralt of Rivia if he'd been born in a kind world not a rugged hunter but just a bright eyed, pale haired noble looking dude in chainmail sitting in prayer. Meet Werner. Party is surrounded in blood pit. Chieftain comes out to gloat. Prep for slaughter. Pretty boy calls out from the cage. I challenge you. Chieftain proper character introduction time. I will stand with these four against you and your choice of champions. For honor and power, figure it is a good way to learn to operate as a team and so the chieftain and his two lieutenants open the cage and square off against the party with their new paladin buddy. Barbarian and ranger steal the show with some rule of cool crits. And Werner makes a killing blow against the chieftain. Be oath of vengeance. Party gets to loot in. Werner declares, your chieftain and his lieutenants lie dead by our hands. You are to leave these lands, but should you seek to reclaim glory, march west. The Shieldbreaker tribe awaits you in the shadow of Mount Cursed. To party, drop all stern face nobility and go into full on grateful glee. Bless you, bless each and every one of you, I can only hold that sort of bravado for so long. All of you have my deepest gratitude, and in exile though I may be, I owe you all at the very least good drink and food before you collect your justly earned reward. Forward to tavern where the party collects their bounty and they are bought the food and drink. They can practically see the quest giver icon above Werner and get the proper backstory. I was the only son of my family we held a modest kingdom to the west. I blame myself for being too trusting, but we were betrayed. The families of the lower court rose up in a bloody purge. In shame, I ran, and have been working to find allies, build power to reclaim my homeland. But I am no fool, the coffers of my kingdom are denied to me, and I would never ask adventurers to fight for the promise of coin alone. They pass every inside check, to see he is a completely earnest and grateful noble. And so start the main quest. And start to notice a few things throughout campaigning. Werner speaks most of the beast tri languages fluently, orcish, kobolds, goblins and so on. He is a blushing schoolboy around the infernally bloodlined sorceress who seems to reciprocate. He is a dutiful tank healer but damn if his spells aren't particularly offensive. Makes a habit out of trying to gain control of tribes and groups rather than outright murder. Reveals as they approach the outskirts of his kingdom's territory a few months later that he has been at work for a few years doing that made much easier having new and truest friends at his side. The bestial army is awaiting their war chief south of the border. Has some nice darkened plate armor, and adorns a wicked looking helmet. I gained the allegiance of these tribes by honoring their traditions, and if it is their tradition for the one who gathered the army to wear this helmet I shall not disrespect them in such a manner. Party realizes they're going to storm a kingdom with a dark plated paladin of vengeance who had an orcish army at his side with the intent of seizing the throne. Rogue finally asks wait, are we the baddies inside to again reveals that Werner sees them as his best friends from the bottom of his heart. My friends, I know the thought of war is terrible, and with luck it shall be done quickly. You have helped me get this far, will you stand with me still party deliberates. He's been nothing but good to them. Plus he is a general bro and has been keeping the orcs and such from pillaging villages. Ranger says the damning thing. It's just one kingdom cue a siege. Cue an infiltration through the city streets. Cue storming the castle. Cue execution of traitor families. Establish Werner as Emperor Werner cursed Von Dietrich the return. Embrace party as noble heroes who restored him to the throne. Set to work integrating all of those beast tribes into the populace. Set about building kingdom up as new multicultural center of civilization. Permanent invitation to party to consider the grand keep home between their adventurers. 
as Werner's responsibilities will keep him largely relegated to the throne for some time. So Party has new home base, and is strong enough to go solo but Werner always has jobs for them in the name of security and safety, and always paid more than fairly. He fucking loves those guys. So Party adventures. And notices things each time they come back. First time they returned. Many red banners were draped around the keep and city with a crest of scales weighing a fanged skull and a human skull in equal balance. It is a symbol of our new civilization of equality and understanding the next time, there is construction of a large, black spire in the center of the city. The tribal warlocks and I have been in discussion, and we've found a way to channel the sun's very energy into nearly free energy and power for the people it turns out the color black absorbs the heat better. And so while a bit garish it will improve the quality of life for everyone here immensely rogue starts getting uncomfortable. Next visit. Tower is complete. Ominous. Red banners flickering in the wind. Banners popping up in villages further and further out. It is my duty as emperor to make sure that all within my borders are safe and secure. I shall not be one of those reclusive, self-absorbed leaders who would let his people suffer. No matter how far away they might be true enough banditry and shit is at an all time low. But Werner is now wearing black and red finery in some grim imagery and has large portraits being spread in every village so that my people never have to fear that they've been forgotten or neglected inside trolls and he still super means it. Main threat is the dragon born up in the mountains, which he hopes his dearest champions will be able to handle. Ranger is uncomfortable. But I would never send you into any sort of danger unprepared. As such I had our artisans and smith craft for each of you enchanted arms and armor. Ranger is no longer uncomfortable. Go full wizard of Oz. To barbarian. For you my mighty friend. I have had commissioned an axe that shall transfer the strength of your foes into your own person. I know your rage is one of your mightiest weapons as such I would see that your enemies fall long before you ever will toss in some spiked light armor as well. To rogue. You. Old chum. Are the cleverest. Slyest. Most true gentlemen I have had the pleasure of fighting alongside. For you I had my warlocks pluck the essence of shadow and fold it into a cloak so the danger shan't find you. If you were ever hurt, I do not know what I would do with myself sure it makes him look like a horror when activating the effect but damn it's nice. To the ranger my friend, your bond with nature I am sure would put many a druid to shame. Never has there been a more fierce huntress or a keener eye. And thus only a bow made of dragon bone and black powder arrows is worthy of you. Ranger is not sure whether to be uncomfortable. To the sorceress. Trying not to blush. And you. My dear. It. May not be a secret that I am loath to see you go every time. But I know in you there is an adventurous spirit that cannot be tamed. And so I count my blessings every time you return here. For you. I bequeath the family heirloom. So that your power never ceases to grow. And I'm ill of. Some wonder. I pray that it keep you safe till you return to me. Give her an amulet that lets her convert the soul of a fallen enemy into an equal leveled spell slot. One enemy for a first level, two for second, etc. With a degeneration rate of one soul per week. Alternatively eight souls could be two fourth level slots. Not that I am encouraging my party to be murder hobos but. Sorceress is super duper comfortable. Next adventure they return from there are smaller spires in villages popping up. The luxuries of the capital should not be restricted to the capital that, and we are working on setting up a portal network through each of the spires that way, no village, no town nor city shall ever go unprotected ranger says, hey, it's still just, one, country, decide to see how far I can push this. Send a summons to my champions. Be distraught Emperor Werner. Be hunched over map of empire and surrounding kingdoms and territories. Year or two has passed in game, my friends. Truly the crown has never weighed so heavily. My people are happy in flourishing. Our cities are expanding. The tribes continue to learn and join civilization. But therein lies the problem. Resources are beginning to run thin. I have sent envoys and invited foreign dignitaries to open trade, but all are loath to deal with us due to what I can only consider to be a specism that flies in the face of all rationality and civility. And yet I have a duty to my people, I see that we have a higher standard of living than all of our neighbors, and they stockpile resources that we could share and all profit from. Ranger and Rogue start getting uncomfortable. Start pacing around map. Cape trailing. Arms folded, 
Skull themed crown a new addition to honor the new traditions. I have purchased the acquisition of copies of ledgers, and I know that there is more than enough for everyone if they would only trade, and yet, I refuse to let my people down. So I ask you, my friends who I trust as family, which of my neighbors should I spread my reach to first party deliberates? The rogue, rogue, Werner, what if we tried to stop you me, rolling a nat 1 on insight? BY died and shocked and hurt why, I'd be devastated, completely and utterly heartbroken. After all we've been through, I adore you all as kin eh? Oh, oh oh you cad ha ha ha, you sly little, I see what you did there, that's such a ludicrous idea, you have a roundabout way of trying to boost my spirits my friend, but it worked. Gods I am lucky to have been saved by you all, the party is half guilted half bribed into leading an invasion force. Not the first or last time, by near end of campaign, the empire had spread over half the continent black spires rising in every major trade hub allowing imperial forces quick access to any potential threat while also pushing every new conquest into magitech high fantasy. Party getting reputation as the overlords chosen, keep showering them in appropriate high end but super fucking menacing gear and rewards for their quests and loyalty. Follow the evil overlord checklist to the letter. Party getting up near level 20, have them allying with putting down dragons so that we might benefit from their wisdom, and never risk those that would seek chaos and naught else, barbarian is my field war chief and loving it. Rogue is less spimaster and more the black hand of the emperor and best stabby friend, ranger is the mistress of the hunt, helps find any criminals or foreign insurgents or any corrupt leaders who might give the emperor a bad name. Surprise surprise insurgents are all fucking foreign when a fucking adores his subjects and his ultimate dad friend to his empire. Sorceress pretty much decided to be a missus. Evil overlord when she gets tired of the adventuring life. Also has gotten good at perma charming any disloyal viceroys. Created new alignment. Friendly evil. All hail the big fucking friendly evil guy. Too long didn't read convinced my party to help an evil overlord with overwhelming friendliness and compassion. So I've recently moved Nick Bedia merch over to Teesprings and have a few new designs. Listings are below the video and in the description. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop!